And the modern world being connected to the internet is crucial for spreading ideas and interacting with the world around us. So any plan that wants to connect a remaining 3 billion or so people to the internet should be something that we should jump at. And there are a few projects going around at the moment aiming to do just that. Like the Google Loon project, which aims to use stratospheric balloons to connect remote areas to the internet. Or Facebook's drone program, which aims to use autonomous drones flying around areas to do the same thing. Or even satellite-based programs, where they want to launch many thousands of satellites into the orbit of the Earth to connect the entire globe, such as the SpaceX's Starlink program, the Amazon Kuiper program, and the OneWeb program. In this video, we're going to focus on the satellite solution, because although it offers the massive potential of solving this connectivity problem and connecting everyone in the world to internet, it also offers an incredible risk. Currently, there are about 5,000 satellites orbiting the Earth in both low and high Earth orbits. And these satellites will reflect some light as they go around the Earth, and we'll be able to see them as they cross across the night sky. So on a nice clear night, you can look up at the night sky and you might pick out one or two satellites. These satellites serve a whole range of different purposes, from giving us uh, navigation through geostationary GPS satellites, through monitoring the Earth's climate and environment, and of course spying on different nations to understand what the supposed enemy might be up to. There are already a whole bunch of satellites orbiting the Earth and they don't really impact the night sky all too much. But the SpaceX Starlink program started with its first submission of wanting to launch 12 thousand satellites into low Earth orbit to try and connect main regions to this Starlink internet. Now this caused quite a bit of concern among the astronomy community, especially after the first launch of 60 prototype Starlinks in May of 2019. In these videos here you can see the Starlink train of satellites quite clearly in the night sky. So they're very bright and very reflective, reflecting sunlight from the sun to us on the ground. Now this was kind of a precedent. A single company has launched all of these objects into space and has altered the appearance of the night sky in such a drastic way. This caused a little bit of controversy, especially on Twitter, where astronomers were criticizing SpaceX of the Starlink program and saying it would damage ground-based astronomy. And there was some back and forth with neither side really wanting to budge on their positions. But very recently, SpaceX has kind of doubled down on the Starlink program and have applied for an extra 30,000 satellites to be orbiting the Earth to cover the entire Earth in the Starlink internet program. Now, all of these satellites, 42,000 satellites in total, is more than 10 times the total number of satellites we have orbiting the Earth at this moment. And this drastic increase is already starting to have some effects. So again, very recently, there was another launch of 60 more Starlink satellites from SpaceX. And this one caused a little more havoc in the astronomy community with many people around the world being able to see it. And with modeling done by Kes Barsa, we're able to see that in twilight, you should expect to see around 100 Starlink satellites if the original 12,000 satellites are put into orbit. So if there's, say, 40,000 satellites in the orbit of the Earth, you could probably quadruple that number. So you should expect to see 400 satellites in the sky at any given time, just littering the heavens above. This could have substantial cultural impact, changing the night sky forever, and in the hands of just a single company. But perhaps connecting 3 billion people who were previously not connected to the internet is worth that change. So apart from just changing the appearance of the sky, this will have a dramatic impact upon astronomy. Around the world, there are telescopes 
dotting the surface, which spend every available night scanning the night sky, trying to understand everything we can find about the universe. And flooding the night sky with these Starlink satellites will change that field entirely. Astronomers won't be able to use twilight and dusk to calibrate their instruments on the sky, and they and might not be able to observe some of the faintest objects they want to. Because these Starlink satellites, even in their final orbits, are predicted to be perhaps a hundred thousand times brighter than the objects that astronomers might want to look at, say distant galaxies. So these objects, just from the Starlink satellites, might not be able to be observed. As you can see in this deck cam image here on the 18th of November, these streaks of light through the image make everything that falls around those streaks from the Starlink satellites completely unusable. So if astronomers wanted to study a galaxy or something else inside of those streaks, they would be out of luck. Now a common rebuttal of astronomers saying that this will damage optical astronomy is that we could use the advancements made by SpaceX to put better telescopes in the orbit of the Earth. Well, although it's true that telescopes have a better quality of image in space, it's not necessarily as good now as it used to be, thanks to advances through technologies such as adaptive optics, where telescopes can use stars or lasers to correct for distortions in the atmosphere that make images more blurry than what you would see from space. What's more, it's much easier to build instrumentation for the ground. There's no real mass limit. And you can test things kind of on a whim. You can throw something together, put it on a telescope, see if it works, and go about your observations. If you wanted to send telescopes into space, it would cost years and many, many millions, perhaps, of dollars in research and development to make sure all of the hardware you want to send up into space is completely flight tested and safe to go into orbit. And, of course, the cost of launching the satellite into orbit would add to the entire project. And maintaining the satellite, watching how its orbiting is going, watching if it's doing the right thing, because once it's up in space, it's kind of on its own. All you can do is hope that the systems work correctly, or you might have wasted several thousands to millions of dollars. So realistically, putting a bunch of telescopes in space is not going to solve this problem. We've invested billions of dollars in telescope infrastructure on the ground, and we can mostly correct for a lot of the effects that the atmosphere has on ground-based observations. What we can't correct for is the effect that Starlink satellites will have on observations. And that's just for optical telescopes. For radio telescopes, it could be even worse. These telescopes are built to be incredibly sensitive because the brightest radio sources on the sky are fainter than taking a cell phone and putting it on the surface of the moon. So if you were to, by mistake, or just in general, blast a lot of uh, signal at a radio telescope, it could potentially fry the detector and the entire system. So all, again, all of the millions and billions of dollars that have been invested in high-performance radio telescope systems around the world, like the Square Kilometer Array, could be in jeopardy from these projects like Starlink. But again, is the science astronomy worth sacrificing connectivity for everyone on the world? We could go into the argument of all of the spin-off technologies that astronomy has produced, such as Wi-Fi, or in the inspiration that astronomy provides through uh, the incredible projects, or ease of access as a science, because anyone on Earth who has a telescope can start to contribute through amateur astronomy. Instead, I'll leave it up to you to make your decision there. The single biggest problem that comes from these space-based internet programs is something called Kessler syndrome. A Kessler syndrome is kind of the term for if you put too much stuff in the orbit of an object like the Earth, you run the risk of collisions happening between objects. So in low Earth orbit, these satellites are traveling incredibly quickly, around 28,000 kilometers per hour. So if there's a collision between any two objects, 
it can create an immense field of debris which then travels off in kind of all directions at incredibly high speeds. And then if you have too much stuff in the orbit of the Earth, this debris can come along, hit those other objects and create more debris. So you can have this exponential or runaway growth of dangerous debris orbiting the Earth. And it could get so bad that it kind of inhibits any exploration into space because the probability of getting hit by a bit of space junk is so high, it's just not worth the risk. And the reality is we're already starting to get close to Kessler syndrome, especially thanks to nations that have decided to be a cool idea to blow up satellites with missiles orbiting the Earth. So as it stands, there's around 5,000 usable satellites orbiting the Earth and tens of thousands of bits of space junk, largish pieces of space junk orbiting the Earth, doing nothing but providing a risk of hitting other objects. And millions of small pieces of debris. So things as small as a micrometeor or even a fleck of paint can cause a lot of damage, as seen in this chip on a windscreen of a space shuttle that was caused just by a fleck of paint. And the scary reality is we don't have any solution to Kessler syndrome. If it kicks off, that's it. Earth orbit will be crowded with debris and there's no way for us to bring it down. We'll just have to wait for the orbits to decay, which could take hundreds to thousands of years would be stuck in a cage of our own making. So if you're planning to send 42,000 satellites into low Earth orbit, you need to be incredibly careful and you need to have as many safeguards as you could possibly have to make sure you're not going to collide with anything. So this includes monitoring the space environment to find as many debris as possible and trying to actually understand where your satellites are, which is a bit of a problem with the Starlings because they have a collision avoidance system on them, which can maneuver these satellites automatically, putting them in orbits which we may not know exactly where they're going to go. And this level of carefulness that's required in this dangerous environment of near Kessler syndrome, I don't think is being exhibited by SpaceX. And this is most seen in a recent near miss between a satellite from the European Space Agency and one of the only 60 Starlink satellites at the time. In September of 2019, an ESA satellite was within one in 1,000 chance of colliding with a Starlink satellite. Now there was some bug in the SpaceX system which meant that they didn't acknowledge this probability of collision, which as far as the space environment goes, one in 1,000 probability is you need to move the satellites because the risk of collision is just too high. So ESA was forced to maneuver their satellite to accommodate the broken SpaceX system. Now this doesn't fill me with much hope that SpaceX will be able to manage 42,000 satellites at any given time. The probability of just a small piece of a micrometeor tearing through the satellite, disabling it and turning it into a, an uncontrolled bit of space junk is probably quite high. And as I said before, there isn't a solution to Kessler syndrome. So Starlink could hasten us towards an inevitable Kessler syndrome, which will lock us out of space for potentially thousands of years. So these are the issues with Starlink and to a lesser degree, because they want to send up less satellites, the Amazon Kuiper program and the OneWeb program. They'll change the night sky for everyone on the world. They'll disrupt astronomy, one of the oldest scientific disciplines, which has provided us with innumerable magical discoveries about the universe we live in and technological advances that not many people know are associated with astronomy. And it will make Kessler syndrome much closer to a reality 
and trap us in to Earth so that we could never explore the surrounding environment. So as we talk about the Starlink program and connecting everyone on the world through a single company, which will effectively have a technological monopoly, to the internet, we need to think, is it worth the risks of losing the night sky and trapping ourselves in the Earth? Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm interested to see what you think a potential solution to this Starlink problem might be. Thanks for watching.